Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing the HODL waves. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you can, of course, get access to charts like this one. Not only for Bitcoin, but also for many other cryptocurrencies as well. So the HODL waves, or HODL waves, however you prefer, basically give you insight into the behavior of various types of investors, okay? You have the people that just kind of stick around no matter what and like to hold Bitcoin for long periods of time. And then you have the people that just kind of show up when there's a mania phase. And we can isolate those into long-term holders and short-term holders. Here's a, a description of the hot waves. If you, if you want, just read it. You can. But... If we isolate short-term holders and long-term holders. Short-term holders, in this case, we're defining as anyone who has been holding Bitcoin in that wallet for six months or less, at that address, for six months or less. And what you will find repeatedly is that at market, at like mania phases or market cycle tops, sometimes it'll be sort of a mid-cycle top, but you will see a mania phase, and in that mania phase, the the percentage of, of short-term holders holding the Bitcoin goes up. And essentially what's happening is the long-term holders, the people who just kind of DCA'd Bitcoin and whatnot for years and years and years, they start selling as the price goes up, and they sell to the people that only want to come in and buy it when it's absolutely going parabolic. And you can see we had these peaks in 2013 and in 2011 and in 2017. You see that peak in short-term holders and then also in 2021. In fact, the second top in 2021, we didn't really see a surge of new retail interest, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people say that the April top was the, the real top. I have mixed feelings about it. I can certainly see even a lot of the own, my own indicators that I've developed through the years certainly say that April 2020, 20, April 2021 was the more significant top. But at the end of the day, I also go back to what I fundamentally believe, and that's that price action is king, right? The indicators give us an idea of what's going on, but at the end of the day, price action is king. That matters more to me than what, you know, what the indicator says is the top. Price action is ultimately what matters, not, you know, an indicator. And at the end of the day, as I've expressed repeatedly many, many, many times, all models are wrong. There's not a single model out there that is going to be ultimately correct and stand the test of time forever. All models are wrong. Some are useful. That's, sort of the, that's the quote. That's the saying. Um, all models are wrong. Some are useful. And so it, it makes sense to, to sort of think like that and, and to sort of think like, hey, the model will give you insight, but it's not going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. This model, looking at, say, short-term HODL waves, it gives you insight. It says April 2021 was the top. At the end of the day, if you just sold all your Bitcoin here in April 2021 and called it a day for the next year or two, you're doing fine, right? And last cycle, as I've said before, the Bitcoin that I did sell, I sold into the first peak. And it was actually quite a bit. I mean, I, I published it on ITC Premium. It was 87% back then. Um, but the second top threw me a curveball, right? I mean, none of the indicators were suggesting that it was a significant top. And, and so what I did to try to help with that in the future is we developed the, the social risk, right? Which, which was also screaming and in the 0.9 to 1 wristband at that secondary top. And it was a lower high, but there was still a lot of social interest. And this kind of shows you that the social interest was lower than April of 2021, May of 2021. It was a lower high. So basically, price went up, but there wasn't you know, a commensurate, a commensurate amount, amount of new retail investors to keep coming in and, and sending the price higher. So I just thought that was you know, pretty interesting. Uh, to, to look at that. And, and that was one of the models that, you know, was developed partly because of that that double top in, in 2021. And I think the social risk has been really useful. It's been helpful to understand the general direction of like all Bitcoin pairs and whatnot. 
Uh, but yeah, if you look at short-term holders, you can actually see that there was a surge right here in going into the halving. But it wasn't as big of a surge as you know some of the ones we've seen before, and it's hard to really know if it's comparable to this one, or maybe, just maybe, it's more comparable to what we saw in 2019 where it had a bit of a surge up, a couple of them, right? But then it ultimately just kind of faded back down. And, and so it is interesting because, you know, you can see that it really went up a lot, but it, it kind of just plateaued in April and it hasn't moved a whole lot ever since, right? It's mostly been going sideways. It got a little bump up at the end of May, but it's mostly just been going sideways. And of course, if you look at the opposite, right? If you look at, at long-term huddle waves, you will see generally that long-term holders are sort of selling into these parabolic rallies, right? That's why the hot waves for these go down and then they start to go back up as you get into, into the bear markets, right? As people accumulate their Bitcoin back that they sold going into the parabolic rally. You can see the same thing happened in 2021. Now, there was a little bit of a sell-off here. No denying it. I mean, you know, this is the thing with on-chain data is that like, you know, and I think a lot of people learned this lesson the hard way back in 2021. Throughout all of 2021, so many people were just posting all these on-chain indicators and saying that they're just nothing but bullish. And so one of the things that, you know, I did because of that, because it's, it's so hard, you know, sometimes to look at the, the, the indicator and to say, like, is it bullish or bearish? Because your bias is going to want to make you think whatever you already think the market's going to do, right? If you're bearish on the market, you're going to look for the bearish reason why the on-chain indicators um, don't look great. Or if you're bullish, you're going to say the on-chain indicators look great. And so sort of compensate for that. That's why we also have the on-chain risk, right? And it doesn't really care what you think or what I think. It just looks at historical data for a lot of different on-chain charts. And it normalizes that performance between zero and one. And it tells you what the on-chain risk is, right? You don't have to know if you're, you know, you don't have to, you leave your bias at the door. So going back and, and looking at, at the long-term HODL waves for Bitcoin, you can see that at the top of the long-term HODL waves, they, they actually hit around 79% back in, in late 2023. But then as Bitcoin went parabolic into early 2024 with the spot ETF, you can see that it fell from a high of 79%. Today, it's all the way back down to just, just below 71%. And if you zoom in, right, you can, you know, you can pretty clearly see that. Now you could break this down even further, right? If you wanted to look at, I say, just people who have been holding for one to three months, um, you can see a little bit of a spike recently. If you just wanted to look at it for say one to two years, you could see some interesting trends as well. Um, though it's not as obvious when you look at look at it like this, because I, I feel like you can find evidence. Uh, to support a lot of different views. But if you look at sort of this cycle over here, you can see that it bottomed out right as the top was forming. Here, it bottomed out kind of right after the top formed. And then over here, it actually bottomed out right at that secondary top, right, in November of 2021. And again, it, it's it's only obvious in hindsight, you know, is it is it bottoming out now? Does it have a little bit more to go? But these are charts that you can use. And like you can see, like, all right, is it bottoming out? Or is it is it continuing to go down? One interesting thing, though, is that from this cycle to this cycle, it was a higher low. So maybe this one will be a higher low as well. The counterpoint, of course, is that this 2013 cycle was actually higher up, right? It was all the way up here. But anyways, that's the, the video on the on-chain stuff for the HODL waves. Hopefully, it's useful to you guys. Make sure you guys check out uh, Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. You can access this sort of stuff not only for Bitcoin, but for a lot of other cryptocurrencies as well. And um, I will see you guys next time. If you're wondering why I'm not talking about the price as much, uh, it's because I'm actually out of town. I'm recording this video on June 14th. And so I don't even know what the price of Bitcoin is going to be by the time I actually publish this video. Again, I'm going to be out of town. And so a lot of the videos will just be like delayed because I'll, I'll be out of town and I just want to release something while I'm gone. Um, so it's not just a ghost town. Um, try to lead to a little bit of increase, you know, surge in the social risk. But I mean, at the time that I'm making this video, Bitcoin's, you know, sitting just north of sixty-six thousand uh, dollars. Of course, by the time you're watching this video, it might be entirely different. But that's where we currently stand. Thank you guys for tuning in. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.
And I also hope to see some of you guys at, at Bitcoin, my, uh, not, not, not Miami, it's not in Miami this year, Bitcoin Nashville in, uh, in July. So I'll see you guys there, hopefully, if you are there. Bye.